Welcome to my channel Black Sheep Logic. Today on the bench we are going to take a look at the Fluke 233 digital multimeter with a remote display. This Fluke 233 digital multimeter has about the same functionality as a Fluke 115. The main difference being that this Fluke 233 digital multimeter is bigger and it has a remote display. If you don't need the remote display, I think the Fluke 115 is a much nicer meter. I have had this Fluke 233 digital multimeter for a number of years, but it's not a meter that I use on a daily basis. In fact, I almost never use this meter. At the end of this review, we'll talk about why that is and why I don't use this meter. But let's take a look at this meter on the bench first. This is the Fluke 233 digital multimeter with remote display. It has your normal basic ranges, AC voltage and hertz, DC voltage, DC and AC millivolts, ohms and continuity, capacitance and diode, temperature, amps AC and hertz, amps DC. This meter has three input jacks. The first input jack is for voltage, ohms, diode, capacitance and temperature. This is your common and this is current measurement. It has a 10 amp fuse. The feature that differentiates this multimeter from most other multimeters is the removable display. The display uses a wireless interface that Fluke claims is good for 30 meters of range. All functions of the 233 digital multimeter work with the display either docked or undocked. This is also a true RMS meter. When docked in the multimeter, it uses an infrared interface. I have a set of test leads connected to this meter with the common black, and my red test lead is plugged into the voltage ohms input jack. Here I am measuring an AC supply showing approximately 222 volts. Also note that the red warning indicator lamp is on. This tells you that the voltage is higher than 30 volts AC. Pressing the yellow button will select the secondary function hertz. Our supply here is 50 hertz and that's what the meter is showing. I have now selected DC voltage and connected my test leads into my Fluke 726. I have the Fluke 726 set to source 5 volts. The Fluke 233 is showing 4.996 volts, so very close. Now looking at 10 volts, the Fluke is showing 9.99 volts, which is very close. 15 volts and 20 volts. The 233 is well within specification here. I now have the Fluke 233 set to its millivolt range and I have selected the secondary function DC millivolts. The Fluke 726 is set to source an accurate 25 millivolts. The Fluke 233 is showing exactly 25 millivolts. This is 50 millivolts and again the Fluke 233 is showing 50 millivolts. 75 millivolts, very very close and this is 100 millivolts. Although a very basic electrical meter, it's quite accurate. I have now selected ohms. This is a 2.2 ohm resistor. The Fluke 233 is showing 2.3 ohms. I have the second function continuity selected. It's very quick and latched. The beeper is also nice and easy to hear. I have now selected capacitance. This capacitor is an electrolytic capacitor, 100 microfarad. It's polarized so the black test lead is on the negative terminal. The Fluke 233 is showing 86.3 microfarad, but probably within specification given the component tolerance. I have now selected diode. The common test lead is hooked up to the cathode. My other test lead is hooked up to the anode. It's showing a voltage drop of approximately 0.4 volts. I now have a thermal couple connected to the meter and I have selected the temperature range. The actual temperature in here is 67 degrees Fahrenheit. If I press the range button, I can get that reading in degrees Celsius. To demonstrate amps, I have selected DC amps. My Fluke 726 is set up to source 4 milliamps. The Fluke 233 is showing 4 milliamps. This is at the end of the Fluke 233's milliamp range. Its resolution is only 1 milliamp DC. This is 8 milliamps, 12 milliamps, 16 milliamps, 
and finally 20 milliamps. Although we're at the limit of the Fluke 233's measurement capability in milliamps, it is still quite accurate. I was going to demonstrate AC current measurement using the Fluke I400 AC current clamp. This current clamp provides a scaling of one milliamp per amp. With a six amp load, the Fluke 233 did not have the resolution necessary to make that measurement. So in summary, what do I think about the Fluke 233 digital multimeter with remote display? If you need the remote display capability, then it's a good choice. It's a very basic meter, but it will get the job done. But that remote display capability comes at a very high cost. This Fluke 233 is considerably more expensive than the Fluke 117, or in actual fact, the Fluke 115 is a closer match with the temperature measurement capability. But the main drawback with this Fluke 233 digital multimeter with remote display, and the main reason I don't use this meter at all, is that this meter has a very, very poor battery life. Even when it's turned off, it's still drawing a fair amount of current. And this means when you go to use the meter, you're always needing to change the batteries. And that is a really big problem for me. Also it requires five AA batteries. Packs of batteries do not come in multiples of five, and that's really irritating. Although that may seem like a minor gripe, it's quite expensive, especially considering how frequently you need to change the batteries on this meter. Unless you absolutely need the remote display, this is not a meter I would recommend. Thank you for taking the time to watch this review of the Fluke 233 digital multimeter. If you did enjoy this review, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you very much.